Hello everyone, welcome to Fearfully Greedy. In today's episode, I will go through the companies in the portfolio and see their updates. I think it's a good uh, activity. It's not something I sit one day and I go through each one of them. I always looking at the, my companies, I'm always looking at the news and I'm gonna see what they report, what they don't report. And yeah, it's something I do all the time. But for the video, I pick through the last month and a half or two months or three months like the recent news of the companies and I bring them to you to see maybe how I do it and maybe to see how you do it okay uh, the portfolio has crossed 56,000 euros which is crazy over 20,000 euro gain a lot of it from one company which as the gurus always say it's what should happen there will be a few outliers that will drive most of the conversion uh most of the gains or unrealized gains or realized gains uh disclaimer these and all my videos are not to be considered financial advice please consult a professional or please do your own work or your own research before investing i also may hold position in all the discussed stocks so take that into consideration the portfolio as of 3rd of March is 56,800 uh, euros, almost 20,000 euros in gains, 53.5% um, gain on the original 37,000 euros. Not original, I mean, I've been adding not every month, but a lot of months I've added 1,000 euros here, 500 here, 2,000 here, and I will keep going like that as I see, as I have some cash. Uh, I keep adding it to this portfolio. At the moment, we have Carvana, Naked Wines, Warrior Med Cold, Playmate Toys, Pax Global, uh, Nagacorp, Baba, and Rai International. Uh, I've priced one of the my current positions at zero because I should have done a long time ago, but it seems a good time when we're, I'm at maximums. Uh, so forgive me, at the end of the video, I, I will go over that position and what has happened and but maybe not what has happened, just uh, to show you wh what I have done. Okay, first thing, let's go by biggest to smallest. Uh, let's see about Carvana. Okay, Carvana has had a very good year, 50% uh, gain in the since uh, first day of the year. I have 250 shares, which have been a nine bagger as of today. Okay, uh, my original position was 2,000 euros, and now it's 19,000 euros. So I can't complain here. And uh, recent news, uh, they have become cash flow positive, which is good because it's not good to just have EBITDA positive, as this company says. Uh, they have a big amount of debt and they have to pay that interest. So they have kind of refinanced that debt uh, before, which uh, we covered. And then they have just reported the full year 23 earnings. Okay. What are my thinkings uh, here? Uh, in all of the companies, I will say this, what I want to see, and then we'll go over the news if they strong, strengthen that that thinking, that idea, or if they take away from it and maybe they break that idea. In Carvana, um, they were growing greatly, but losing a lot of money. The debt became unsustainable, and at some point they had to pivot to being profitable. I want to see my companies profitable. I want to see them independent and not reliant on external cash. And they were doing that. And now they have people to not do that. So I would like to see improved unit economics. I would like uh, really also to see some unit growth, which I know that we won't have. But that's mostly what I'm looking. Improved unit economics, improved customer satisfaction, improved uh, units. That's what I would like to see. So for the 2023, we have the first year with positive net income, which is not adjusted, not nothing, uh, positive net income, uh, adjusted every day over 300 million. The record full gap uh, GPU gross profit per unit, it was over 5,500 uh, 5, euros, and non-gap is almost $6,000. Uh, I said euros, I mean dollars. Uh, Carvana reports in dollars and it's... US, okay. Uh, they have reduced uh, the cost for the business almost a billion. They have reduced the uh, SGNA per unit 13% and 60%, gap and non gap, uh, SGNA. Uh, and then the advertisement expense is has been the lowest per unit, which is crazy, okay. 
that's starting to show maybe what's under the hood for this business, which we couldn't see with the growth and the bigger, bigger, bigger losses. So I'm happy for that. That that strengthens the idea that they ha they are improving those units economics before going into growth, which I think that's the right order. The other way you can fail miserably. If we see here, uh, I, I say that I would like to see unit growth, but we are not seeing that. Is that bad? Well, they are taking one step at a time. Maybe first improve the units economics and then going back to growth. But revenue is 10 billion. So it's not a small company. It's not like a startup anymore. Uh, we could, can, can we say that? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's kind of a startup still, but uh, I believe a lot in, in the potential. The market is so scattered, so little big players. They have so many more tools, a uh, huge advantage in cost structure, huge advantage in uh, unit economics that they should kill the market. The, the idea of this talk, the idea of this is that they will probably fail, but if they don't, they will kill the market. And it's looking that they will not. So excited. Management objectives is driving a positive free cash flow, which uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, they say that they will have a slight as they will be slightly up on units uh, sold, which was 79,000 units uh, last Q1 23. So maybe 80,000, 85,000, we don't know, but around that. Uh, adjusted EBITDA above 100 million. I just want to see them uh, move units, improve unit economics, and be able to pay the interest. That would be, so not burning more cash. Uh, that would be my goal if I can ask for my uh, Christmas card, that would be it. Okay. Then let's go to Naked Wines. This is my worst in investment ever. So we have a nine bagger and here we have a half bagger. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've pulled into this stock uh, almost 17,000 euros. It's almost the opposite. And at the moment, the position is a bit less than 9,000 euros, right? Uh, Naked is this online retailer of wine, and they, it's a, like an online winery. They make the wine, they source the wine, and then they sell it through a subscription model through to their customers. They jump the three-tier system in the U.S., but they have three markets, U.S., which is the biggest, U.K., and Australia, okay? What has happened with them is that they are having such a hard time to find these quality customers. They have some of them, which are... Uh, very good in unit. It's good for the customer. It's good for them. Uh, they source the wine. It just it could be even better if they had an easier time acquiring customers. But that's a, that's the thing. They are having big trouble in that. But the news that we have is that a trading update uh, on the company. The, there's a new CEO, uh, like a pointed CEO, uh, an early redemption of the BLI. Uh, we'll go over that. Okay. What I like to see at Nikki Wines is. Uh, improved uh, payback. I would like to see better unit economics. Yeah, and lower attrition of the current customer rates. And also uh, like good reviews, online reviews. That, that's something I keep track, of. not weekly, but almost, right? It's something I look a lot, uh, reading all the reviews, seeing what people are saying I wanna see. It's, it's the best I can do. Like uh, the other operate in Spain, I cannot visit them. There's very little information. So for me, it's it's important to to go over that. Uh, what do we have? Uh, so the updated it's after the peak trading season, which is uh, like Christmas, and 10% versus prior year, which is around guidance. It's an improvement of the first half of 24. They report that like in June, so it's 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 the year is from June to June, something like that. Uh, the customer base is getting smaller. The worst thing that I see here is that they have acquired 35% more customers than last year, which is good, but it cost them 70% more than last year. So the payback is so low at the moment. Uh, can they operate here? Yes, but maybe at a bigger scale, like now it's, those numbers are not crazy good. Okay, so that's the worst part. Uh, very given money, very little cash at the moment, like they have some available liquidity, some credit lines, and they are trying to reduce those uh, SGNA because since they cannot get more customers to justify this uh, current structure. So they are trying to lower the, the their structure, like their cost structure, their fixed costs. 
uh, inventory levels should be trending down and they are 10, 10 million less than uh, Q3 of 23. So we should see. What will that do lowering that inventory is that uh, first they had more inventory purchase and less cost of goods sold, right? So they were building the inventory up. Now, as the as we are not getting those bigger base of customers, we should unlock some of that inventory as we move uh, as as we meet, move forward. Okay, the break-even sales as of now they need like two hundred seventy-eight something like that uh, break-even sales, and they are trying to reduce to two forty-five. Still, that's not the issue. The issue is getting those customers through the door being able to replenish at least the current customers effectively because we could stay it here and it could be a good business at this size if we are efficient with cash okay if, if we buy a good product sell it for a good price everyone is happy we are not having to burn so much cash to just keep the volume and that's a problem acquiring customers at the moment the attrition rate has is trending down which is good since we're acquiring less new customers, the current customers are getting higher quality. So we have more sales per active angel. There's some inflationary things like higher prices. Uh, the customer base, as I said, is going down. Here, it tells the story. Like we had this, we're used to this two times, 2.5 times, 2.9 times payback. And since second half of 21, it's been very bad be it by the Apple, Apple policies or other things, we could live here. Like we, um, with these volumes and, and we don't need this to grow so much. At the current valuation, it, it, it's ridiculous. Like the current valuation doesn't show for any of this. Uh, what they are saying is that the line is flattening. We we might see at a, at a point that we will start to see positive uh, developments in, in, in angels. We'll see. Okay, the other news is that we will have a new group chief executive officer designate. So Rowan stays by the side and maybe to the transition period. Rodrigo Maza, there's not that much online. I tried to find some interviews or something of him to see him talk, to see some of it. Uh, he used to he launched and scaled some online delivery business I'll call it for alcoholic beverages and subscription models, which maybe it's what we need, some more how do you say like bootstrap like someone that has really gotten his hands dirty trying to launch something maybe a more effective uh executive let's see i i i'm up for the change of hands i i like gromley on it like the founder I, I liked him on it but i also think that rowan maybe is not that hungry anymore so maybe some younger guy uh, a bit more hungry and by the side maybe he brings some new ideas he joined the company in september 23 so the my guess is they saw something very good he was running like the uk uh division so excited uh, we need a change of of maybe pace uh, in the company so is that helping uh, unit economics or not? Uh, we'll see. Like it's 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 better. Since it's from the fifth of February. Uh, and the other news, it's very unrelevant. So, but uh, you should t take a look at all the news. Uh, they when they sold their physical majestic wine warehouses and like uh, they they had a physical business. Uh, who they sold it to was CF Bakus Holtko, and they do a vendor loan note. So they paid some cash, and then some of it um, they did, did like a loan with interest. It was sitting on the books at eight eleven point six million, and they sold it for uh, nine million plus interest. Uh, so they had a two point five million loss on that. How it was accounted uh, that loan? Okay, very unmaterial. Okay. Uh, we should wait until June, I think, uh, for Naked Wines to see how it's going. Okay, now for Warrior, the third position at the moment. Uh, this is a miner in the US. They specialize in metallurgical coal. I've made multiple videos about the sector and even Warrior, so take a look at those. Warrior has always been my highest position, like uh, usually 25 to 30% of the portfolio, like most of the time. And I used to have 300 shares. 
very recently I slashed the position to half, so selling 150 shares with an average buying price of 15.30, selling it at 63.70. So it's been like a four bagger, which is great. I mean, uh, I have a, I had a very strong conviction. I, it was a very simple idea in the end, if you take a look at those videos, but it turned out great. I've also been very lucky of having a very elevated met call price market, which has accelerated everything, right? Um, at the moment, I have 150 shares, and I still I still think it's undervalued. With Warrior, I look for a couple things. I look that their cash cost of uh, for call is low, that the SGNA relative to revenue is consistent. I look that they are as high as possible in production, and that's uh, pretty much it. Okay, let's see. Uh, cash cost of sales. This has, uh, so if you see $303 uh, on 22 and 220, this is royalty. So the difference here is pretty much the same. If you see it here, it was 40%, 60%, here 53 and 47%. I look that this is always like a, a, low, amount compared, a low amount compared to the quartile for the sector. right? Uh, then if we take a look, their nameplate is between seven and a half. Uh, thousand short tons uh, and eight right so they are a very good clip at the moment they are selling all they are uh, producing which is good we i, I also don't want to see they're building up inventory so uh, out and salt that's the best way the net income is really close uh, on this last two or three years uh, the the price i don't look at it uh, so much i only look that it's close to the the benchmark uh, and the uh, free cash flow looks much lower than last year, but that's also because uh, CapEx has been higher with the uh, new projects, right? Uh, the outlook it's, is consistent. This is consistent. The price is relative elevated. Uh, this is how much they're spending capital expenditure for Blue Creek. This year we will have the first few tons of Blue Creek and probably next year more like a, like a one, uh, how do you say? one single miner uh, operational. So uh, I think for the fourth quarter or third quarter. So that should be a big increase on this, a big increase on everything, a lower here. So it will be great, okay? Uh, and this is the, mostly how I check the low ball. Um, if you saw, they reported 200, which is much lower than this. This uh, index tends to be like very much more uh, determinant uh, on their pricing when it's lower like at these elevated prices if you see okay maybe for this day they have this price for this day this price and it's more like a guess uh and probably there was a lot more volume here a lot more volume here still this 300 and it reported 200 for the entire year this is still so cheap if we don't get to this number my original fees was between 150 and 180 dollars per per ton so we're at we're at two times that, so it's it's great. What can I say? Uh, let's take a look at playmates. This is a very recent position, so I won't update anything here. Uh, we were wait, waiting for the profit alert. Like if you are interested in in why I'm investing in playmates, what it is, uh, the last video is about that. So take a look at that. Okay. Uh, profit alert came out. The new movie came out. It's been only like a month and a half that I've owned the stock, and it's almost twenty percent up. Okay. Like this was expected like we kind of knew that they would have a great great year let's see let's see how it process uh so let's see the positive profit alert if we see revenue were 1.1 billion uh 220 million hong kong dollars uh that's net profit my prediction was 1.2 uh, between 1.2 and 1.4 i came slightly high operating income is 220 to 280 that's from my video and that's net. So what they kind of did the profit alert. So it was pretty much on the top. Like it should be 250 operating income. So pretty much that. The, the thesis is that this company in the next three years, they will pump more or less uh, their market cap, which at the time was 800 million. And now it's more like a billion. Um, and they should distribute some of that or most of that or like just uh, shareholder returns in some way. Okay. Uh, if we see here, the market cap 
at the time was 800 now it's more like a billion but with these earnings the net cash position because that's the other thing they have a net cash position which is bigger than the market cap so it's a negative enterprise value at the moment should be like uh 1250 something like that and from what i've heard uh from the forum and the original poster from momentum i don't remember the name but uh the, the the thesis what's the thesis uh, uh, they say that probably if be over a billion they, they should uh give it as a dividend so I, I would like to see that so during the earnings uh like the report which should be the 15th of march i think uh we should see some comment on capital allocation but if you see this company during cycles of content they sell a lot they they, they have the master license for the mutant uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the small figurines. Uh, so now we are entering a new cycle, looks like it. Uh, and the first year is 224, which we don't know. Like, uh, is this, 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 that? Probably, I don't think it will be as big as a cycle as the last time, but it's not needed for this valuation to make sense. Okay. Uh, they just announced that on October 9th, 2026, there should be uh, the second movie. And I think until the fourth quarter of 2026, this company should have increasing revenues, maybe a flatter year this year and increasing revenue share. Will I will I hold to the end? I cannot tell you, but I, I will keep you posted uh, as I do so, maybe with a, a bit of a delay, but I think good things are coming for this company. Next, PAX. I don't have any news for PAX. PAX is, uh, they, they sell POS, POS, the devices, and in two days we should have earnings so i will uh, keep an eye on that and then uh, nagacorp so nagacorp we have uh, like sad new i think i commented on it on the last video but yeah dr chen uh, passed away and then we have the earnings for nagacorp the thesis is this is a casino in cambodia they have a very depressed valuation and depressed earnings from uh, COVID. their biggest clients and biggest revenue generators are high rollers, Chinese high rollers, and the Chinese tourism is still not picking up. The moment it picks up, this is so ridicul ridiculously cheap. They also have a future profile. This is a company I'd like to own for a long time, actually. Like it's not a, a something I, I want to sell out of. I think they have a very bright future as Cambodia also has a bright future, for, especially for tourism. So that's uh, a bit the thesis. What I would like to see is that the revenues are increasing. They have more foot traffic. Um, win percentage is pretty consistent. Like there's no, it's nothing that, that looks fraudulent. Uh, as I said, uh, Dr. Shen, they, he owns almost like 75% of the company. So they, there's a cap there. The here's, I think they will keep rolling with it. The executives are the same as before. There's no, no big change here. Gross gaming revenue has only grown 15%. So to compare, this is a third, a bit less than a third than what it was in 2019. So we're not back to business. We're not back to normal. Maybe the new normal is different. Maybe the Chinese customer takes longer to come back. Maybe it never comes back, but it's still very undervalued at the moment. Um, we're doing uh, 300 million in EBITDA and the valuation I think as of today is like 1800, 1800 million dollars if we convert it. So it's not overpriced and I'm sorry, but um, tourism will come back like it or not. They also have the hotel. They have another hotel coming back in. The future is bright. I think for Cambodia, we might have just to be patient uh, for, a, for a long time. Like if we compare here, this is not this. Like we're not back to normal. It's trending up. It's looking better. Uh, the tourism statics are also looking better. It's positive in cash flow. Debt is not an issue. So we just need to be patient. I just need to be patient. So you do your, <laughs> you do your thing. Okay. Uh, if we take a look at um, tourism data, right? Thailand now is the biggest visitor and it's almost double this year. Vietnam almost double. China like five times last year, but it was lower. Keep in mind, 2019, China was number one. Okay. China was like right here, 
right? It was huge. And this high roller from China is what drives a lot of revenues for casinos, for this casino. They have a monopoly, so it's the only like real casino there. Uh, what is so interesting is that the Ministry of Tourism of, Cam of Cambodia have recovered to 82% from 2019 in 2023, but the China recovery rate is only 23%. So that's what we're seeing really. If we take a look at the graphics, the year for 2023 started low and kept going up. As you know, in China, there were further lockdowns later and later on. Uh, the previous years that were so high were 18 and 19, so normal years in some way. And we're picking up, picking up, picking up. And maybe this year we're already starting closer to this. The premium bid market continued to to be the best performing segment and the average daily rollings for Q4 2023 exceeded the average business volumes recorded in 2019 and it's for the fourth quarter so we should have a very good 2024 mm, i will keep an eye on it i said i want to own this company for a long time with the data i have at the moment if new data comes in i might change my mind i will change my mind for sure for BABA, they did the December quarter earnings. For BABA, I really look for them getting back to growth in some way. It's a big company that it's hard to make a like a one minute explanation of, of BABA in, in some way. So I, I cannot like really do that. We cannot go very much in depth here. I could make an entire video, but there are many videos about BABA. So I don't think I'm adding much to, to the buy. I think the same thing. I think it's the big player. I think other people are trying to take from it, but they are trying to take from it a losses. And this all this reinvestment, all this know-how, uh, sure is more bureaucratic than other startups, but they have reinvested so much in other things that some of it might play out. And we don't need them to play out for this to work. As as We'll see in a second. But December quarter earnings, okay? Uh, I want to see like segment by segment, but it's really grow, uh, working. We are back to small growth in Taobao and Temal uh, group. Cloud intelligence is flattish. It's been a bit of a disappointment, but we have positive EBITDA almost everywhere, minus the international digital commerce. But if a lot of the growth for the future might come from, from here. Uh, I've been a user from Aliexpress uh, here in Spain. It works great, uh, I have to tell. Quality issues, I think they are improving uh, a lot of the time. Kaino is becoming a thing on, on its own since the, um, they wanted to list it. And it's it's become positive. Uh, also cash flow, like positive every day, every day uh, we could say. But in general, we're a bit more back to growth. The number of merchants operating in our platform during the quarter continued to grow at double digits year over year. So more offering. And this double digit growth trends, trend has sustained over the past four quarters. So there has been a change. Like we see a change of pace. It's a big ship, so it's hard to change route. But I see positive developments. Also, it is so cheap still. Uh, during the quarter, AliExpress delivered over 60% year-over-year over year order growth, driven by choice, which provides an enhanced experience to customers by combining better product selection, price, and quality with split of logistics and great customer support. Because now you can buy from them, from China, and in a week, in two weeks, you have it in your home. So it's, it's relatively quick, right? I Here, I just want to make a point about valuation they they approved 25 more billion dollars of share uh, buyback here just to show like what the market cap is which is like 180 billion dollars they have almost 60 billion of net cash so we could take that out right if, if we wanted and i'm sure the cash is there like this is not a small cap chinese company like I, i'm sure the cash is there dance stake you can value whatever you want, but uh, I, I think that's also another $25 billion. So if we take that valuation, then what, what are we? Are We're at $80 billion for a company that very, very recently or quite recently was doing $20 billion in EBITDA. Four times for this. Mm. And I, the margins as revenue is picking up, her uh, margins should also expand uh, slowly. 
I, will we see the 20 billion soon? Maybe. Like, uh, I, I see it as very, very positive. Also, there's a, this buy, buyback, right? And this won't be funded all by the net cash, like just by cash flow. Like half of, of this cash flow could be the, the buyback that we see here, right? A, a year, maybe a third. But yeah, I think they will try to return some of this net cash to, to us. Um, I see no problem with Baba yet. Some people say that uh, the premium segment will win and the low end segment will win and they will get squeezed in the middle. I don't know. I don't think Baba is that weak, but we'll see. Then the last thing is Ra International. I have no news. <laughs> uh, Ra International uh, is this. Know, it's this remote services company mainly operating in Africa. They are listed in the a AAM in London, and it's being like a big loss, eighty-two percent loss. I have not had any more cash. We have no news. Probably will have news in May, and this is a position I will just let run. I don't think it's worth this. I don't know if it's worth more than this. Maybe it's zero. We will know. I will also say that I have valued, so the portfolio with the, the 56,800 euros, now this includes the zero for inter Rauli Edwa. So my first zero in the portfolio, I decided that, that I'm very brave, so I decided <laughs> to price it at zero now that we are at maximums. Uh, I think that's very, very brave. Uh, so if we, if you go to the, uh, like there's a link in the description where there, my Google sheet, it's a bit 24 hours. Uh, when I buy something, maybe next day or so, I, I add it to the Excel. That's very quick. So if you want to take a look there, there's an, another page where it says realized gains and losses. And these are all the positions I'm no longer in. Well, whatever I'm still in, but I put the half of the soul of the cell there, right? Uh, and I have price inter at zero. I've talked about this many times. You will see that in the Giro, we, we, I still have the position valued at something, but I don't know how to take it out. So I, I will price it at zero on the Excel and then the Giro, it will be there, okay? I will also like to recommend a cool read, a cool read that I, I found. It's the practice of value investing by Lilu. It's not something he written. It was a talk he gave in Peking University in 2019. Very, very interesting. As always, uh, value investing, there are like four main ideas. Uh, he says the four same as always. So it's always beating the same ideas to, to our heads. And then all the complexity comes from the interaction between the companies, the markets, the customers, the suppliers, and that's what gives the complexity. But in the end, the idea is so simple. Uh, I thought it was funny that uh, I had just started studying English and confused the spelling of Buffett with the speaker's actual name, Buffett, which had an extra T. But I stayed anyway, since I thought that this guy had the audacity to call him, himself free lunch. Because I don't think a Buffett is free lunch, but whatever, free lunch, he must know something. Uh, I think it's cool. I like to read that. Another one, uh, I will link this to on the on the description. Uh, it's a very cool read. Like it's very short. Maybe it takes like less than five minutes to read. And it's uh, another old idea that just we need to beat into our heads again. Uh, and same to the other. Uh, I will also link in the description. Uh, if you can take a look at who wrote this, it's uh, it comes from a good source. Okay. Um, I will see you on the next one. See if I find some some company to invest. Uh, we talk soon. Bye bye.